I don't know if this design is called a Celtic knot. I'm not even sure necessarily what the style of design is, just sort of lines and geometric shapes. It's certainly Celtic knot adjacent. It is in the vein of a Celtic knot. We're gonna go about creating this really cool shape that looks kind of just like this. Here in Adobe Illustrator Fully Vector, you're gonna love it. We're gonna cover the shape tools and creating precise shapes using the Pathfinder for some stuff, using the Shape Builder for some other stuff, playing around with global colors, messing with some masks, creating some textures with gradients, and all sorts of stuff just like that. And it all starts right now. Let's jump into Illustrator and get going. All right, so let's begin our process here in Adobe Illustrator. It's fairly straightforward and fairly intuitive, uh, but just follow along and try to follow closely. We're gonna begin with a 2560 by 1440 sized document here. I'm going RGB color. You can do whatever you like. Go ahead and hit create for that. And we're gonna begin this whole thing by creating two color swatches. Um, we're gonna work with global color today because it's easy to adjust. You could use recolor artwork. We're gonna play with some global color and probably actually recolor artwork as well. All right, we're gonna just keep everything pretty uh, down the middle here. Um, I am going to go with my first color, more of a pink color. So my red is gonna be 255, my green is gonna be zero, and my blue is gonna be 122. It's kind of this hot pink color. And by the way, I don't know if you noticed, I had the little global option checked on. That's important, so if we change the swatch, all the artwork that is filled with that color will change as well. Let's go ahead and hit the new swatch again. Again, a global color. And this color is gonna be a little bit darker. We're gonna go 40 on the red, zero on the green, and I believe 95 on the blue for this really dark bluish, purplish, I guess it's more of a blue color. Let's hit okay, and we've got our two beginning colors there. We're gonna apply them later on, but we just have them in place now. All right, so the whole thing begins um, we want to we want to create this effect sort of quadrant by quadrant. Um, if we lay it out, um, we can create some rather unsavory shapes that would have YouTube uh, kind of turning a, an eyebrow up at me. Think bad guy in World War II and some of that insignia. So for the purposes of this tutorial, we're gonna create it one quadrant at a time to avoid any uh, unseemly shapes. But you can really create it any way you want. It's kind of fun to create it this way though. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. All right, I made a couple little adjustments. Let's just get everything started here. I'm going with a black fill. Let's grab our rectangle tool, click a single time, and we're gonna create a 40 pixel wide rectangle that's also 200 pixels tall. I'm gonna hit okay. And you see we've got this sort of tall, thin rectangle in the middle of our artboard. I wanna rotate this rectangle and create kind of an L shape. A million different ways to do this. We're gonna have a little fun with it. We're gonna go object transform, rotate. And here, yep, in a rotation of 90 degrees, perfect. Hit the word copy or the copy button, I should say. And you now have two rectangles that are forming this sort of plus shape. We want to align them so that they are making this little letter L. Uh, again, a million different ways to change the alignment. I'm gonna just use my align panel, which I opened up a moment ago. I'm gonna hit this little button here, the uh, align to key object. So select that, and then we're gonna align it to the left edge and the bottom edge like so. And you can see we have what looks like a, a funky letter L. Now we wanna duplicate our vertical rectangle uh, twice. So we want three sort of these vertical rectangles sticking up. We're gonna use our effect, distort, transform, and then the transform option here. And what we wanna do is move this horizontally. Uh, let's try moving, well, we wanna create two copies. Remember, so we want three of these little fingers sticking up. So we want two copies. And let's try moving it horizontally 20 pixels. Well, that's not enough. Let's try 60 pixels, still not enough. Let's try 80 pixels. And that looks like it's lining up pretty well giving us 40 pixel shape, 40 pixel gutter, 40 pixel shape, 40 pixel gutter, and of course, 40 pixel shape. We'll hit okay. Now, if I select this, it's still only letting me select one shape, and that's because this transform effect is just an appearance that's been added to this uh, vector rectangle. We want to expand the appearance so we can grab those three rectangles. We're gonna do that by, of course, selecting the object and then going object, expand appearance. Now we have three shapes. See right here, this layer, which I enlarged in my layers panel. This layer right here, it's three shapes. They're all grouped together. So we might wanna go object and say ungroup. There it is, I'm used to using the hotkey. And now we have these shapes. Uh, we could begin to just copy this and you know begin this process of rotating and creating the shape as we move around. But again, like I said, uh, I don't wanna do that. I wanna just create this one quadrant at a time and then kind of do the duplication at the end of it. 
So the next part is to add the roundness or begin adding the roundness. Uh, let's begin with our the stick that's furthest to the right here. Now these rectangles are 40 pixels wide. So if we grab our ellipse tool, we wanna to create an ellipse that has a radius, which is 40 pixels. Now a radius of course is half of the diameter of a circle and the diameter is the width or the height of your ellipse. So that lets me know that I want an 80 by 80 pixel ellipse and I'm gonna hit okay. This is gonna be perfect. It's twice as wide as our shape. It's exactly what I want. Now, quick tip for you. If you don't have them turned on, go up here to view and just turn on your smart guides. It's it's gonna make this particular step as we begin moving through this a bit easier because we wanna take this center point of the ellipse and align it to the top right corner. That The C word says anchor. We want those to sort of click together and they will click together. You see that right there, boom, intersect. We've aligned it perfectly. So we have our sort of center stem of our shape. Now we wanna create another ellipse. This ellipse though, the radius has to be 40 to be as wide as the middle stem, plus 40 pixels for the gutter, plus another 40 pixels for the outermost edge. So 40 times three is 120, 120 being the radius, so we have to multiply that by two, which is 240. So we wanna select and make an ellipse that is 240 by 240. We're gonna hit okay, great. Now, in order to move this into place, uh, what I'm gonna do is swap my fill and stroke by just hitting this little uh, side to side flip flop arrow just so I can see what's going on. Again, I'm gonna grab that center point and I wanna align it to that same exact center point. Now we've got a lot going on here because now we have the anchor point for our vertical rectangle and the center point of our ellipse. So a lot of cooks in the kitchen, so to speak. I'm gonna shut off that smaller ellipse. So I can just take this center point and align it to that same exact point just like so, and then I'll flip fill and stroke again. Now, we want this to be like a big donut or you know tire shape going around, but the tire shape has to be 40 pixels wide because we want it to look like it is coming up out of our center stem here. How do we do that? Well, select the ellipse, we're gonna go object, we're gonna choose path, we're gonna choose offset path. Some of you know where this is going, and we're gonna offset this path negative 40 pixels. So it's gonna shrink the path by 40 pixels, but a duplicated version of the path. So we're gonna have two ellipses here. I'm gonna hit okay, and you can see I've got two ellipses. I'm gonna select both of the ellipses, and I'm gonna open my Pathfinder panel right here. If you don't have it open, Window Pathfinder will do the trick. And I'm gonna select this little button here, the Subtract uh, Shape option, and it's gonna punch a hole in the middle and leave me with this nice donut shape, perfect. Now we need to create a second one of these donut shapes for the big circle that comes all the way up out of the far left vertical rectangle. So again, we can do a little bit of math, 20 plus 20 plus 20, 120 plus another 20, 160 plus another 20, uh, I'm sorry, uh, it's 40. 40 plus 40 is 80, plus 40 is 120, plus 40 is 160, plus 40 is 200. So we need 200 as our radius, which means we need a diameter of 400, which means we need a 400 pixel ellipse. Math is not my strong suit, geometry, probably even worse. Uh, all right, I'm going to again hit my little flip-flop arrows to just preserve my stroke. I'm gonna grab that center point. If this compound path gets in the way, hey, shut it off. We don't need it to be there. Again, we're gonna align that center point with that top right corner of our far right rectangle. And you can see it just, it lines up just perfectly. Hit the little flippy flop arrow again to give us a filled ellipse. We're gonna do that same thing, object, path, offset path. We're doing negative 40 pixels again. The, the width of our shape has not changed. Grab both ellipses, go ahead and punch out the middle. And now you can turn on all of your shapes. And you can see we have this thing going on. But we need to make some sense of this. Right now, it's just kind of like a glorified uh, GPS pin marker or something like that. So here's what we need to do. I'm gonna begin by selecting the smallest ellipse and, the, and its vertical uh, stanchion or post here. I'm gonna select them and I'm gonna hit this center option right here, the merge shapes. Boom, we have our first shape just like that. Now with the other shapes, it's a little bit more complex. What I wanna do is I wanna select everything. Well, I don't wanna select the bottom horizontal piece. Um, so there's, there's a vertical piece. It just doesn't look vertical because the thumbnail or the thumbnail of the layer was not uh, refreshing. I wanna select everything except this bottom horizontal rectangle. So I'm gonna shut that rectangle off because we're gonna just uh, mess around with the shape tool here for a second. So I'm gonna select all of this stuff and we are going to use the shape builder tool and begin joining and cutting apart some of this stuff. So grab the shape builder tool right here 
and we're gonna hold down our Alt or Option key and come through the middle of this first. Cut out the center, and the same thing here, we're gonna cut out the center, okay? And then we're going to, so I was holding down my Alt or Option key while I drew, uh, dragged that line through. Now I'm not gonna hold down my Alt or Option key, I'm just gonna just use the Shape Builder tool as it's supposed to be used, and join those shapes together, join those shapes together, and then I can join those shapes together. So now we have three nice shapes, just like so, and we have our little horizontal bar, which can be on the top or bottom. If we need to adjust it later, we can. But now you can see we have this shape that is kind of twisting and turning in on itself. Now we're cooking with fire. Let's go ahead and add some color and then play around with textures and shadows and have some fun with this thing. Uh, let's go ahead and use the base pink, right? Our global color that we set all the way back at the beginning. And I'm gonna group this, all this artwork together because we need to duplicate it in a minute and things will get messy if we don't just group it and keep it neat and clean. Object, group, voila, look at that beautiful thing. Now we're going to add some texture and shadows. We're going to do this uh, using the transparency panel, which you see down here. Um, but before I do that, I need to duplicate this artwork. So we're just gonna go edit copy and then choose edit paste in front because A, we want the artwork to sit on top of our pink uh, little loop-de-loo here. And we also, by pasting in front, you paste it exactly back in place. So it's right in the right spot. We're gonna fill this with our really dark blue color because this is gonna be our shadow. Now I'm going to come down here to my transparency panel down here and I'm gonna double click this blank space to create a layer mask that is filled with black. So it's all hiding now. All of that purpley, bluey color is hiding. Now here's where the fun part begins. We grab the rectangle tool and the first thing I wanna do is create a shadow right in here along this part of my shape. So it looks like as these loops curl around, they sort of tuck underneath um, the vertical risers here in our shape. So here's how we're gonna do that. We're gonna grab our rectangle tool and I'm just gonna drag out a rectangle and make it as precise as I can get it, right? So you can zoom in and move over and just look and you may have some snapping that's happening and, and something like that should be um, pretty good. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not gonna be too terribly concerned with hyper precision uh, for the sake of this tutorial, but certainly be as precise as you want to be and can be. Uh, all right, now that we have this shape, don't worry about the fact that it's changing colors, just ignore all that stuff. Select it, we wanna fill it with the black to white gradient up here in our swatches panel. So black to white gradient, great. Um, this looks funky and bizarre and weird. Don't worry about that yet. Um, we're gonna play with it in just a minute. But before we do, we're gonna add our texture, our grain. We're gonna do that up here under the effect panel. We're gonna come down here to texture and choose grain. Now, what I've got going on here is here under the texture folder, of course, we chose the grain filter. And I'm going with the stippled grain and intensity of 70, contrast to 40 works great for me. Uh, you'll see people using this technique and using all kinds of different settings. Play with something that you like um, or just copy exactly what I'm doing and then adjust later if you find something you like better. Um, if it, any given day, I may use slightly different settings. There's nothing that's hard and fast here. Hit okay. And you can see now because it's the mask that we're applying this grain to, that is filtering all of that dark blue through this grainy texturized mask and making it look like we've applied texture directly to our artwork, pretty cool. But we don't have that much control over it right now, but we do, we're just not exerting that control and we can't exert that control by using the gradient tool. And I'm gonna drag the gradient here out of this bottom corner and I'm gonna pull it up this way. You can see it hasn't quite uh, refreshed properly. Don't worry about that, don't sweat it too much. Uh, now I'm gonna deselect this. And if you have areas like this where you're just saying, you know what, it's the, the it cuts off too sharply. I don't like there's a straight line. You can always bump it down a little bit, right? There you go. Now, now it's re-rendered itself. But sometimes there's little lines that appear and like this line across the top of the artwork doesn't quite look right. A couple things you can do. We can pull and make some rounded corners and see what that looks like. That could look really interesting and neat. Um, I'd probably need to pull this down a little bit here on the bottom just so we don't round anything off there. That's kind of interesting. Um, it can really just be totally your discretion. Whatever you think looks cool here, uh, go ahead and stick with that. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave that 
B. Now I wanna create a second shadow, and that's a shadow that is over here at the base of my vertical uh, bars, because I wanna make it look like they're then tucking under this, what would be a crossbar here on the bottom. And there's gonna be one other little adjustment we have to make to the mask in just a moment, but we'll get to that in a second. Let's just duplicate our rectangle, because it has our black to white gradient, it has our grain attached to it, and we can just use the gradient tool and fuss with it. So I'm gonna hold down my Alter Option key and just drag a copy of this mask over, and it should pretty much click to the edge of your other mask. Again, remember you have your smart guides turned on, so that should be helping you out. Uh, and then you can adjust the height of the shape a little if you want, but really we're gonna grab the gradient tool and I'm just gonna drag a vertical gradient from kind of the base of the gutters straight up, holding down the shift key, just as far as I kind of want the shadowy effect to go. And I want it to go pretty far because I want there to be a lot of this kind of mixing of the color. But the one thing I wanna be careful of is I don't wanna totally swallow up the shadow effect to the right. So maybe I will actually on second thought, just kind of pull this back a little bit. Maybe I'll make it more like that. And yeah, it just takes a second for the effect to really render. It looks really heavy here on the bottom. We're actually gonna get rid of all of that purple covering that's on the horizontal bar at the bottom um, in just a second. So let's get out of the masking mode now. Oh, and by the way, if you're doing this, and maybe when this finally finishes rendering, you'll see it. Sometimes you have like a little line on the edge of your rectangles where it touches your artwork um, because of the way the, the grain filter or the grain effect, I should say, renders out here in Illustrator. Um, and it leaves a little line. If that happens to you, here's what you wanna do. You will take your rectangle tool and you're gonna fill it with rich black. So you can select your foreground or your fill color here and just choose the solid color, this little tiny thumbnail all the way to the left, right? And then we're gonna go to our color panel here and I'm going to say, give me CMYK and I'm gonna make the K and the cyan, magenta, yellow channels all 100% black. And then you just draw a black rectangle that just covers the very edge of your other rectangles. So that's just gonna ensure that you don't have any harsh lines and weird edges on your artwork showing up. All right, so let's get out of the mask. So you can see we still have the mask selected, the little blue outline around our mask. Come over here and click on the layer thumbnail. We're back out fussing with our actual layer artwork now. I'm gonna save the document, give me one second. Okay, so here we are. Remember I said there's one more thing we have to do to the mask. Before we group this, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna select the bottom group. So it's that original pink group. And we need to use this as a mask to run along the bottom. How do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple, but kind of cool as well. Let's go effect, distort and transform, transform. We're gonna choose to make a copy and we're previewing it here. We're gonna rotate the angle negative 90 degrees. So it's gonna kind of tip it uh, clockwise, if you can uh, envision that. We're going to choose the anchor point or the reference point to be the bottom left corner. So you can see now we're flipping it and rotating it that way. And we need to change the vertical movement. We want it to move negative 40 pixels vertically. So it's gonna allow that bottom track or what's gonna end up being the center line of our design to overlap perfectly. Remember that center line, as with all of our lines, is 40 pixels tall. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now you can see the artwork we have down here. Well, we need to expand this appearance so we can get to that second group and we also need to ungroup it, object ungroup. Now with this bottom shape, we're going to cut it, edit, cut, because we don't need it there anymore. We're gonna select our top group, which has all this texturizing action in it. We're going to select that layer mask again. And how do we paste in place? Well, of course we go edit, paste in front. And that's what we have. Now, the problem is this is filled with the color pink. We want it to hide our texture. So we wanna fill it with that same rich black. So let's go to our color uh, picker here, just the color panel. I'm gonna go back to CMYK and I'm gonna crank everything to 100%. Give me that solid black. And then I can get out of my mask and you can see the effect that we have here. It's gonna help this make, uh, make our shadow look like it's tucking underneath the top of the next piece as it swirls around. Maybe it doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but when we duplicate this, you'll see how it lines up and it's kind of cool. All right, let's select this, uh, this whole business, both our texture and our underlying shape. Go object group, we're almost done. You've been hanging in there. Thanks for sticking around this whole time. Uh, here's what we're gonna do. We've got our little group. We're going to go effect, distort and transform, and we're gonna transform. But now, of course, instead of just creating one copy, we need three copies. So we're gonna say, give me three copies, give me an angle of negative 90, and set that bottom left reference point. Now, again, we have the problem of this doubled up effect of our center lines. So that is rectified by saying, move it negative 40 pixels vertically. 
voila, just like that, hit okay. We're not done yet. I know you're thinking, whoa, what just happened? We just did all kinds of crazy stuff. Well, we do have a little problem here. We're gonna go object, we're gonna expand the appearance and then we're gonna ungroup it, command shift or control shift G or you can just go object ungroup. And we have these groups, but you can see here that our texture shadow is running into this wall, but then there's no texture shadow on the bottom piece here. And that's because the two vertical or the vertical heavy shapes should be on top, right? See that? And if you wanted it to run the other way, you could move the two horizontal shapes up to the top and then you get the texture tucking that way. I prefer it this way, where it's just a, a horizontal straight line through the shape and the textures kind of tuck underneath that one top dominant line. And that's pretty much the shape. You could now at this point regroup it. So select all four of those quadrants, object, group, great. Here's where the fun begins. You can take this object, you can duplicate it. I'm not gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna just uh, align it here to the center of my document, bing, bing. And a couple ways you can begin to edit this. Uh, you can double click on the global color swatch like this. I like to turn on the preview option because then you can see what you're doing. Look at that, hey, it's yellow now. What happens if we make it green? Ooh, that's kind of cool. And then so double click for the, the dark red. Again, turn on preview. Uh, and what happens if we make this? I don't know, what's like a pink? A pink looks kind of weird, I guess. A dark blue, is there like a, a super sea foamy green we could do or maybe a slightly darker green? Uh, maybe a slightly darker green that's a little sea foamy, something like that, make it a little darker, maybe like a dark teal. How does that look? Kind of cool, kind of neat. Pretty interesting. We can hit OK and all of those colors change. It makes it so easy to change the color. Now I can hear you screaming. Yeah, but isn't there recolor artwork in Illustrator? What about that? Well, what about that? Let's just hold down Alter Option and drag out a copy of this. We've got that artwork selected. We can use recolor artwork. We can go edit, edit colors. Well, edit, edit colors and choose recolor artwork. Recolor artwork dialog box pops up, cool. Let's select that uh, seafoam green, which is our dominant base color. Let's maybe make it like a light orangey yellow color, neat. Uh, and then let's make the shadows kind of like a, again, another hot pink, uh, something like that. What does that look like? Maybe a little, that's a little too heavy maybe for my taste. Something more like that maybe, eh, I don't know. Maybe it's gotta be more red. Just keep fussing with it, but it's so easy. Uh, you you can you could play with it all night if you want. It's still not quite right, uh, but you get the point. You can just you can fuss, you can have fun with it, you can play with it. Uh, you can really really do a lot with it um, and make it look really really interesting very very quickly. So this is the process for creating this uh, Celtic knot adjacent shape here in Adobe Illustrator. Yep, and that is it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you made it this far, if you followed along and made this piece of artwork, I would love to see it. Upload it to your Instagram, tag me in it. My Instagram is right here on the screen. My, uh, my other Instagram got hacked, and so my new one, I only have about a thousand followers, but get over there, give me a follow if you're not following me already. Tag me in it, I'll show you some love. Thank you so much for sticking around and learning all about these shape tools and pathfinders and textures and all the different things that we covered in this tutorial. I really appreciate you so much. We created this cool Celtic knot shape today and had a bunch of fun while doing it. At least I did. That's it for this one. Get it, got it, good. Daniel Dodson, touchbid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.